Let's go do a little bit of sampling and see what we might be able to catch. Ice cream. This is what you do. Take your net and you sweep like this. See what we got. I don't know. Species A. Species B. Dancing. Species C. Species D. Species E. Lab work. Extracting DNA. Gloves. Awesome. Sequencing. Beep, bop, bop, beep, beep, boop, bop, boop. Data. Alignment. Ugh. Thinking. So, how do we go about generating a phylogeny based on the data that we've generated? Well, we could do distance approaches called phonetics. What? And look for the pairwise number of differences that there are between each of our, our samples. Oh. Or we could look for those characteristics that are in common using something called cladistics. <laughs> Uh, to find what are the shared characters that uh, exist in between each of the samples that we've done. Oh, and that's the approach that we're going to use. Awesome. Looking for shared characteristics. Awesome, let's do it. Let's apply the cladistics approach to our data. So what do we see? Species A and B both have a T. Species D and E both have a G. This is exciting! Species A, B, and C have A's at the third position, and species A, B, and C all have C at the uh, fifth position. Rock on, dude! And species D and E have uh, G's at the fifth position. And these are all the base positions that end up grouping things together. Did you understand that? So, how would we utilize these data to generate a phylogeny? Well, to begin with, if we look at our data, positions one, three, and five, all group together species A, B, and C. And within A, B, and C, we see that A and B both have T's in the first position. So we would put A and B together. So if we drew it, A and B would make the phylogeny there. And then we would put C on the outside, and that would make one particular group. Awesome. The other two species, D and E, right, they're grouped together because of positions two and five. Why was he so fuzzy? They're grouped together, so if we draw it, D and E together, because he videos himself. And then we connect both the groups, and that would be our phylogeny utilizing these data. That's so sad. Anyway, the last thing that we need to do is test the support for our hypothesis, because it's important to remember that our phylogeny that we just made is just a hypothesis. Oh about the relationships among these particular groups. So let's do that. One way to test the support for our hypothesis is to do a bootstrap approach. And we can do a simple dice game to show how a bootstrap approach works. And here's what you do. First, we want to generate a random data set based on our original data set. To do this, we can roll a die and whatever number it lands on, we will write down that column of data. It was a two, so write down the data in column two. Awesome. Repeat this process for the remaining five columns of data. Now we have a random data set and we can look to see which groups were actually supported. Just like the original data set, we can draw circles around the nucleotides that group species together. Awesome. Normally this process would be repeated thousands and thousands of times, but here we'll just do it 10 times to finish the demonstration. Did you understand that? including drawing circles to group species together. Now we can calculate the percent of random data sets that each group in our phylogeny was supported. Snack. So what about the group containing species A and B? Seven of the random data sets supported A and B, while three did not. And since seven out of 10 is 70%, it suggests that the AB group is supported by 70% of the data sets we can think about toes the same way. If we repeat this process for the ABC group, we see that 100% of random data sets support this particular group. And if we do the same for the DE group, we see that 90% of data sets support it. So now you've seen all the steps in generating a phylogeny, everything from collecting individuals, to generating sequence data, to making the phylogeny, to then doing a bootstrapping approach to test the support for that particular hypothesis. 
And these are the steps that biologists use every day to generate phylogenies to go about testing how particular things evolve. So hopefully this was informative and now you know. So do you like the shirts? Actually, <laughs> do you like the shirt? I do like the shirt. I think the shirts are cool. I think they look fun. Yeah, it's, that feeling on it is. It's like they had to use some template or something. I wasn't quite sure. It kind of looks like artificial grass. It does. Yeah, it kind of feels like it too.